In a conventional microscope, a specimen is magnified by an objective, throwing an image onto an intermediate image plane. The relative size of that plane and the specimen give the magnification of the objective. Normally, not all of that is well corrected, and so an eyepiece cuts out the central portion of it, magnifies it again, and presents it to the eye for viewing. In our light field microscope, we place a microlens array at the intermediate image plane. Rays that would normally come to a focus there instead pass through the microlenses and are recorded separately at a light field plane. Different points on the specimen are recorded in different small images on the light field plane. Here's our prototype, consisting of the bottom half of a microscope, the microlens array suspended above that, and a camera suspended above that, looking down at the microlens array through a relay lens. Here's an image captured by our camera. The subject is a tangle of insect legs, and the magnification is 25x. If we zoom in on this image, we can begin to see the microlens sub-images. If we pan over, we see different parts of the specimen. Within each microlens sub-image, the different pixels give us different directional views of the specimen. Loading this image into our interactive viewer, we can produce oblique orthographic views, at least up to the limit of rays captured by the objective, and we can also produce perspective views even some wide-angle perspective views, again limited by the rays captured by the objective. Remember that the parallax we see here is not usually available to the microscopist, because microscopes capture only a single head-on orthographic view. Returning to orthographic views, we can compute a synthetic aperture image, shown in the upper right, focused at a particular plane. By moving that plane, we can focus on the legs in the front, the legs in the middle, or the legs in the back. And if we're willing to compete with the screen capture program for bandwidth, we can interactively move the plane through the specimen. In this example of an embryo mouse lung, the parallax enables us to disambiguate features that would otherwise be superimposed. And synthetic focusing lets us examine from the front of the lung to the back of the lung, a distance of about 200 microns. Finally, some three-dimensional reconstructions. On the left, the focal stack of our insect legs, color inverted. On each plane, you can see blurred contributions by features on all planes. However, after three-dimensional deconvolution, as described in the paper, we have a volume of cross-sections. In this volume, objects not actually present on a plane are no longer visible. Because we have a volume, we can visualize it using volume rendering, as shown in this interactive maximum intensity projection. We can spin it all the way around. However, our axial resolution is lower than our lateral resolution because of the limited set of rays captured by our objective. No other reconstruction algorithm could do better. For this reason, the best reconstructions are made with objectives having the highest numerical aperture. In our last example, we use a 1.3 NA oil immersion lens capable of capturing rays with obliquities of up to 60 degrees away from the optical axis. The specimen is the mouth of a silkworm, magnified to 40x. In the focal stack at the left, you can see considerable blurring, especially in the cross-sections at the bottom. On the right is the cross-sectional volume, and here is the volume rendering. Remember that although of lower resolution than would be possible in a conventional microscope, this volume was reconstructed from a single photograph.